Well, the world we have come uh, over the last 30 years is over. Uh, it's a new world. And this new world is uh, uh, not the world of globalization, not the world of peace, uh, not the world of uh, free trade, etc. It's different. Well, deglobalization in theory should actually be inflationary because uh, globalization means uh, the um, uh, sharing in creating a product and those who can deliver the best product at the cheapest price, they win out. And that is very beneficial for the final consumer. Uh, uh, that's efficiency. Now, if everybody does his own thing in his, inside his own boundaries and you use protectionism to lock the others out, as the U.S. is doing, the U.S. is subsidizing uh, U.S. Uh, vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, uh, uh, and not subsidizing electric vehicles from overseas, which is against the WTO uh, rules, of course. But I think, I think that's the new world. You protect your own markets, and as you, as we are moving in that sort of direction. I think that will create um, uh, more pricing power to some uh, companies, and, uh, and and we have seen it already in a way. Uh, the surprising phenomenon over the last 18 months was how much the corporate sector in many countries could protect their profit margin and even move their profit margin up, because they have used the situation of the lockdown period to everybody to increase prices. And I think that is what we will see. So I believe this is going to be more inflation down the road. I think the first inflation wave has peaked. We are in a, a downtrend into probably late 23, the second half. And if the world develops along the lines I expect, then I would expect a second wave of inflation from late 23 into 25 or 26. And that will lead to much higher inflation that we have seen. And this is because I expect eventually some sort of calamity uh, in the first part of, the, of next year, of 23, where the central banks will, um, will change and will uh, ease. And as they do, the uh, excess liquidity created will flow into all the assets that, that are considered structurally scarce. And the commodities will be at the forefront. And as commodities move higher, I think oil could easily go to um, 150, 200 bucks uh, in 24, uh, 25. And, and if that happens, we will have inflation rates uh, over 10% in all the industrialized uh, countries or in the majority of the industrialized countries. And uh, if that's the case, then we have a problem with the bond market, of course. And uh, we, we know from the 1970s, the, through which I lived as a young speculator, um, uh, you know, the second wave uh, of inflation is much more brutal for the bond market than the first wave. In the first wave, it is considered transitory, sort of. And only in the second wave, I think the bond market comes to grips and demands a much higher uh, premium. And, and that's when bond deals really go up uh, a lot and when the bond market is getting destroyed, in a way. I've been using the 1940s and 50s as my guide, and um, as opposed to the 70s, because the 70s was very rare to have that second bout of inflation that was larger than the first. The 1940s, we had a similar situation where there was no supply. Everyone came back into the labor force. Prices rose 20%. Then they collapsed, went negative just from the mathematical, you know, year on year effects. And then we had a rebound, but it was much less severe. But you think this time around, it's going to be more severe than the than than the previous wave we've just seen? What uh, what is very different from the 1940s is in the 1940s, you had uh, very high government debt, but you had almost no private household debt uh, and, and private sector debt. That was very, very low because everybody was very conservative due to the uh, world economic crisis, the depression and the wars, etc. Everybody was very conservative and acted conservatively. 
This time, this is completely different. The other difference is that in the 1940s, uh, we entered the baby boom. And we had then demographics for uh, uh, 50 years, basically, of a tremendous growth in uh, the world's population. I think this is completely different this time. Uh, the world's population, particularly the uh, age group of 15 to 65 year old, uh, is shrinking already. Uh, in the OEs, in in 95 percent of the world GDP countries, and uh, and that is very different. And therefore, we can't have the same sort of growth and to grow out of the inflationary problems. We really need to restructure. And, uh, and I do not see any politician around at present who is able to force its own country through a major restructuring. I don't see it. And therefore, they will try the old formula. You know, they thought they had discovered the, the wonderful formula of uh, underwriting the economy with growing deficits. And uh, that went uh, through the roof. And the debt was bought by central banks. And they thought this was a wonderful world. This, you know, it can go on forever. It can't uh, because we have now inflation and we have a changed world economy, as we just discussed. And I think the underlying inflationary pressure, particularly in countries where you have high wage growth, uh, which you now see popping up uh, at almost everywhere, uh, you know, this is different and we cannot continue like that. Of course, they will try. And once they try in the next recession, which I think will start from 25 onwards, uh, we will have a major calamity. I, I think that uh, the second half of uh, this decade from 25 onwards also will lead to a depression. Uh, that depression will not be like, you know, it will in, in some ways be like the 1930s, but in some other ways very different. In the 1930s, we had a rigid monetary currency system and uh, the, based on the gold standard. And uh, therefore, the whole correction of the excesses went through the real economy. Uh, next time, we don't have a rigid system. We have a fiat currency system. And the correction will go through the fiat currency system. And that's why I think the currencies go broke and the governments go broke and we will have currency reforms and things like that. It may mean that we have, uh, let's say, 3% negative uh, rate for three years in a row in real GDP, but we will have uh, our currencies going bust and our governments going bust. So a, a very different world. And I think when I look around and I chat with my friends, not many of the decision makers in the investment uh, industry are prepared for such a world. No, indeed. One of the things I'm thinking through with this is because nobody wants to accept the pain, right? We've no, we know that. We've seen that for the last 20 years. Nobody will take the pain necessary to restructure, so they have to be forced into it, is what essentially you're saying is happening. Yeah. Do you think they impose yield curve control? So I, we're seeing more of what Japan's just done, which was yield curve control into a inflationary market leads to a collapse of currency. We, we have had yield curve control control for some years uh, already and they will try to continue but it won't work because i think the bond market will collapse but if they and, own all uh, the bonds how does it collapse well they well then the currency collapses and if the currency collapses uh, then uh, then obviously you have something has to give it's there is no free lunch something has to give and the currency collapses and i think you will see the currency collapses that are normal in many of the emerging economies. We have seen that many times. You, you mentioned you go to uh, Argentina and, and they know what I'm talking about. Uh, they have had several of those in the last uh, 40 years or so. Uh, now, that problem that used to be a Latin America problem and disease is coming to the industrialized world. And, and, and I think that's different. And, and that means 
we will most likely, before we see currency reforms, we will see currency controls and, and capital controls and things like that. Uh, so a, a very different world where the free markets will become much less free. We hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.